Greetings everyone, George Chiquata here, winemaker, Cinnabar Winery. Here I'm with Kyle Ritchie, our assistant tasting room manager, and today we're trying our 2011 Mercury Rising. Well, George, I'm excited to have this wine here. Um, this is the new vintage of Mercury Rising. Right. And this is the wine that everyone knows us for. This is the wine people can find on the grocery store mm -hmm. shelves. This is the one they find on the restaurants. And this is the one they come in all the time asking about. Right. And I hear that all the time. People will say they're out eating dinner, they saw it on the restaurant list, and they ordered it because they know what it's all about. It's consistent and it hits the spot. So this next vintage should be consistent with the previous years. It is. The way that I blend Mercury Rising, it's a wine I really enjoy making, but what I'm trying to accomplish with Mercury Rising is I blend to a style. I don't blend to a varietal makeup. It's primarily Cabernet. It has all five Bordeaux varieties, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking to uh, blend a wine that's rich, has smooth tannins, nice spice, and consistent in that style. So if some years it's a little more Cabernet or a little less, doesn't matter. The style is what I'm looking for. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it. Well, let's give it a smell. Mmm. I just... I well, love that, that dark fruit, the dark berries. Yeah, right exactly. In. You know, to me, what I... what is reminiscent in this wine to me is it's got that north coast sort of that Alexander Valley Cabernet aroma which to me is very reminiscent of dark fruit some black olives a little bit of tea and it's a very nice smelling wine here and I'm real happy to, to be sitting here trying this wine and also I'm happy that we bottled it in the 1.5 liters yeah the magnums are exciting and people love them they are. You know, what I love about 1.5 liter bottles is to me, it's the best way to age wine. Given that it has the same cork as a 750, the wines evolve a little slower than in a 750 and it allows this juicy sort of fruit quality to remain in the wine. If I had my choice, I would only age wine in one glass if I could. Well, let's give it a taste. I'm ahead of you already, George. Mm -hmm. This is marvelous wine. Another great consistent year for Mercury Rising. Yeah, dark fruit. I get this nice, kind of this nice supple tannins. It's a nice spice. And also, what separates this vintage is 2011 was a very cool vintage. Uh, I mean, it rained until the end of May. And was that hard to work with? You know, it, it provided some other challenges. And typically what you get in cool years is you get a lot of good acidity, but it allows a different expression from the vineyard. So you taste uh, flavors and aromas that you normally don't get. So what I get with this wine is this is really deep, long finish. Some nice, bright acidity. Um, I think this will be a terrific wine for laying down and aging. Great, and that's really why we have the uh, 1.5, so you can it. lay it down and age. Well, I really like the flavor that comes through on this wine, and it is consistent to our other years of Mercury Rising. Um, and I'm really happy that we can have this here as our uh, most notable wine. Yeah, let me tell you where we source this fruit from. Typically with Mercury Rising, I source from different appellations. So that's why we put California on it. So it's primarily uh, Paso Robles, Monterey, Sonoma, Lake, and Lodi. So it's, a, it's really, a, a not only is it a varietal blend, but it's an Appalachian blend. And I think that also leads to the complexity of the wine. Well, it definitely shows through, and it's really a nice, easy to drink, everyday wine. It is, and I think that's what people are looking for. They're looking for a complex wine that delivers um, and, and is very pleasing. Well, I look forward to hearing what our customers have to say about this wine. So come on into the tasting room and give it a try. Cheers, thank you.